All right, donate, <laughs> integrate, <laughs> I like that one. So we're gonna do some linear composition integrals. What does it mean that? It means that it, we're containing a term ax plus b. This is like a, a linear term, right? It's something times x plus something. So an example could be uh, like trying to do the integral of, I don't know, uh, 2x plus 3 to the power of 5, let's just say something like that, dx. Or maybe we try to do like, uh, I don't know, e to the power of, I don't know, 4x minus 1, dx, something like this. So the trick is to not panic, just to try to look for this linear composition. This right here is going to be the key thing right here to look for. Okay, we're going to look for these. So you don't get this on your formula booklet, but I'm going to show you it's actually quite easy. You just have to spot it. So I'm just saying remember what's on the formula booklet. So this is given. So x to the n, the integral is uh, x to the n plus 1 or n plus 1 plus c and so on. And then you got a 1 over x, your sine, cos, and e to the x. All right. That's on your formula booklet. This over here isn't, but I want to show you an easy trick. So um, if instead of saying x, it's a linear composition, so ax plus b, I'll leave it in general, okay? So a is just a constant, and so is b. Those are just numbers, okay? Just like I showed you, like 2x plus 3, or like 4x minus 1. Those are your linear composition parts. So the way it works is that if you look at this note here, instead of saying x to the n, it's going to be ax plus b to the n. Okay? So instead of doing x to the n, it's just this. Well, what we do is we use the same trick. We say, well, it's going to be just like this right here, except we're going to say it's ax plus b to the power of n plus 1 over all this right here over uh, n plus 1, all that plus c. So you might think, oh, these are super easy, and then I just do what I'm supposed to do, except you have to be very, very, very careful. There is a 1 over a term happening right here. This is the key thing here. There's a 1 over a. So whatever a is, do 1 over that before you do this. This is the trick. Let's do it for the next one. See if it works. So this one right here, instead of doing 1 over x, we're going to make it 1 over ax plus b. Well, what's that going to give me? The integral then is going to be natural log of ax plus b, just like you would think here over here, right? plus c. But don't forget, there's a 1 over a in front of it. See? So this is how they go. So once you know how to do it once, you know them all. So let's do a sine. So just to write them all out, sine of ax plus b, we'll do cosine of ax plus b, and we'll do e to the ax plus b. So that looks complicated. What do we do for sine? We just do minus, uh, ooh, we got to be careful here, minus 1 over a first, right? We're always going to have a 1 over a and a 1 over a here, okay? And then what are we going to do with the rest of them? Well, we just continue as we would. So it's supposed to be minus, and it would be cos of ax plus b. Don't forget, plus c, plus this integration constant. This one here will be sine of ax plus b, all that plus c. And this one here will be e to the ax plus b, all that plus c. So this is the key to doing these, okay, is remembering that we put a 1 over a in front of them. Otherwise, that's kind of it. So you notice it's just there's always a 1 over a everywhere. Don't forget this minus. That minus just came because of the minus cos there. So let's see if we can solve one of these. Get it? <laughs> Math professor slaps the roof of the integration constant. This bad boy can fit so many real numbers in it. <laughs> Almost like you're trying to sell a car. All right, let's do three different linear compositions just to show you how gross they look, but we can completely do this. Just spot it as an ax plus b, so to speak. So we'll just do each of these integrals by themselves here. So the integral of f of x dx is going to be, let's see here, well, sine, let's just look at this. Sine becomes minus cos, doesn't it? So I'll make it minus cos of 2x, except i got to do 1 over a. In this case, a is 2. So see, I could do minus 1 over 2. Then I do minus e to the 3x plus 1, because e to the x is just e to the x, except don't forget, you got to do... Um, 
minus 1 over a. So in this case, it's minus 1 over 3. Then I do plus, let's see here, it's going to be 3x plus 2 to the power of 6, all that over 6, because I have to make this grow by 1 power and divide it by that. But don't forget, 1 over a. That's it. I mean, I, I think that was actually fairly easy, wasn't it? I mean, I, I guess I could, I could keep going. I could make it slightly better by just uh, fixing that last term. But I mean, otherwise, I think this is really it. So e to the 3x plus 1. Just because I can say 3 times 6 is 18. So I can say plus 3x plus 2, all that to the 6, all that over 18. Ooh, don't forget. I almost forgot it. Plus c. Plus c. There we go. Do you see? Haha, uh -huh, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> So let me show you this. Uh, I actually forgot to show you this on another video, so I figured I may as well do it here. What happens when you integrate with a constant? What happens then? Like if I have some number in front of f of x, dx, it is actually a really easy little trick. I think I've kind of just done it without really showing you, but the constant can come in front of the integral. So it's f of x, dx. So it's the same thing. So if you have, a, if you have some number, you can just take that number and put it in front of the integral if it's just a number. So for example, something like this one right here, if it's 2 times x squared, you can say it's 2 times the integral of x squared dx. That's the same thing. Which means it'll be 2 times, let's see now, it'll be x cubed over 3. Because remember, you have to grow one exponent. So like that. All that plus c. And so that'll just be 2x cubed over 3 plus c. I mean, I hope you see that wasn't so bad. It was just uh, this factor of... Um, Anytime you multiply by a constant inside an integral, you can always just put it outside of it, like just multiply it when you're done, basically. See, I did the integral here, and I just multiplied it when I was done. You might wonder, don't I have to do 2 times c? Well, no, c is this sort of space holder we leave for any sort of constant number. So just to show you at least this is, yeah, you can always just multiply by a constant outside of the integral. That's it. But otherwise, these linear compositions, they look really complicated. Once you get the trick of it, just use what you know from your formula booklet, do the linear composition within it, but just don't forget 1 over a, 1 over a, 1 over a. So what's the pro tip we learn here? Don't forget about the 1 over a. That's the important part, right? That's the important part for all of these ones here. Okay? There you go.